just to the glory of God is what I want to do. And when that's all over, I don't want to stay any longer. I want to go to where, to my reward that He bought for me. Not what I earned, but what He bought for me. What He gave to me by His grace. So, we see the evening light here. And what does it do to have light if you don't have any eyes to see how to get around in it? What is the evening light? The light comes on to reveal something. Is that right? If there's something here you're feeling, you can't understand what it is in the darkness, then turn a the light on. It's to reveal what's Malachi 4 to do. See? Do the same thing. What was opening of the seven seals to do? Where all these denominations stagger around in this class is to reveal. Bring out. If you haven't got any eyes, then what's used to reveal? There has to be eyes first to see. Amen. Is that right? To reveal. Malachi 4. Reveal. St. Luke 17.30. St. John 14.12. Also John 15.24. 16.13. And to also reveal Revelations 10.1-7. The opening of the seven seals. And the seventh angel's message. To open up to reveal when the evening lights come. Now, if a man in the Lady of Sin age, the people were what? Naked? Are they? Blind. What good does light do to a blind man? If the blind leads the blind, don't they all fall in the ditch? Naked, blind, and don't know it. Even their mental faculties are gone. Their spiritual faculties, a mental, a spiritual understanding. See? Petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truth-breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, the power of revelation, they don't even believe in it. See? They don't believe in such things as prophets and so They don't believe in it. They believe that the Malachi force to be a certain church or a certain organization. When he come the first time, he was a man. When he come the second time with a double portion, he was a man. When he come in the form of John the Baptist, he was a man. See? In the last days, when the evening lights begin to shine, eyes will become open. And you'll see where you're going. Then the body is already formed, standing up on its feet. Amen. Taking motion, moving. Amen. By the Holy Spirit, what? The same one that moved up on the prophets that wrote the Bible. Amen. The same Holy Ghost moving in a body. Filled with the Holy Ghost, moved in the Holy Ghost out of every organization, every kindred tongue and people. A little lady here, she don't belong in this organization or this organization. Belong in this congregation. She comes from somewhere else. And she come in this morning, got a picture there. She was giving to my son. is very much astonished. I don't know if she ever heard about this. Or I don't know. She had a picture of this angel of the Lord that was on the seven church ages, seven seals opened out there. When it did, she said, look back through there. And she's seen that standing in the sky in a dream. And she looked back through there and seen that. Seen somebody in white marching forward. And behind it said, look, said, Brother Brandt, it was you. And said, marching there, said, behind you was people of different colors Packing banners, Georgia, Alabama, all different kind of places, marching forward, coming up into the headship to where Christ was being revealed into the vision. Oh, hallelujah. We're in the last days, in the last hours of the days. Do you see him now in his word? And all of his word made manifest right here before us. Oh, church of the living God, get to your feet. Believe Him with all that's in you. Hold to that little wheel in the middle of the wheel. Let it stabilize every move and every motion that you make. Every thought that you have may it be controlled with this tower on the inside of you. Because God is setting right in His Word of this hour, in the evening light, showing forth the light, the blindness of a bat. You could turn on a light and a black bat would be so blind he couldn't fly. A hoot owl, all those night prowlers and things like that, roaches and things, can't see in the daytime. They don't know what it's all about. They can't see. And the evening lights has come on. 
every parable, everywhere we go, to nature, to the Bible, to the, the statues that Mel, uh, Daniel saw and, and, and the king of that day, all of them saw and all these things, every body, every form, every move, every place in the body, positionally shows us the very hour that we're living in. Not another move can come above it. There was a move of the hand, Charity Wesley. There was a move of Foundation Luther. Charity there never was a greater. It's called uh, uh, the Wesley move. They sent missionaries to all the world. One of the greatest moves that was made in, in the age before that. Then come the Pentecostal age. Then come in the different fingers and things of Pentecostal age of tongues and nose and so forth. Now it's in the eyes. What good would you need eyes or need light if that eyes wasn't there to see? There has to be eyes first to see. And then when that come, he opened the seven seals and revealed the evening light. Taking all the mysteries that's been hid down through these church ages. And now reveal them as he promised to do in Revelations 10, 1 to 7. Here we are today, setting in the midst of the word and the word being revealed to us by Jesus Christ. Then this is God's word. Amen. And be his subjects, we must walk close to the author to understand it. For to reveal, O Lord, what will thou have to me to do? If I must go to the fields and preach the gospel, or must I stay at home? No matter what it is, if I must be a good housewife, if I must be a good mother, if I must do this, that, and the other, whatever it is, if I must be a farmer, if I, whatever it is, Lord, what would you have me do? Wasn't that what Saul cried out down there, Lord, what would you have me do? He was down the church, on his road down to, to, Put all the church in the prison. But then he cried out, What would you have me do when the light turned on as a big pillar of fire hanging above him? What would you have me do? I think that's a good word to close on. To say, Lord, what would you have me do? When I see this scripture so perfectly revealed right now, Lord, what would you have me do? Let us bow our heads. I ask everyone in here to search out your hearts now and ask that question, Lord, what would you have me do? And you people, if you're still on the telephone wires out across the nation, you bow your head and ask, Lord, what would you have me do? Seeing that we're here in the last days and the last hours, just so perfectly before us, so plainly revealed, what would you have me do? Dear God, while they're asking you that question, I ask myself to you, what would you have me do, Lord? As I realize that each day must be counted for, and I pray that you'll help me, Lord, to live so that each day it'll be counted to your honor and glory. I pray that you'll help everyone all across the nation and those here that's present in the tabernacle as we search out our hearts and say, Lord, what would you have me do? What could I do, Lord, to further your kingdom and your cause? Grant it, thou God. Search us our hearts and try us if there be any iniquity in us, Lord, any selfishness, any bad motives or objectives. Oh, God, cleanse us with the blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who we Humbly accept his propitiation of his death and his resurrection and being justified by believing that he did this, we gladly accept the plan of salvation that you give us to us. Father, we thank you for the message of the day, what we believe and what we hold on to, to know and believe that it's your word and your message. Not to be different from the other people, but to try to be more like Jesus Christ, who is our example. Dear God, laying here is handkerchiefs, and there's sick people everywhere. And I myself, Lord, am tired and wore out this morning. I pray that you'll help us, dear God. We look to you for strength. You are our strength. You've helped so many, dear God. The other day, thinking down there in that woods, walking around with Brother Banks' woods, when the doctors, his heart was so bad he couldn't hardly walk around. Then to think how little I know it up there walking in those mountains after that vision, I must get that line. 
I must see that lion killed. And then coming down there and standing there in Tucson, the first cafeteria to see his clothes all bagging down, his eyes drooped. Said, God, if you could show a vision where a lion is, surely you could show about Brother Woods and then it come. Lay your hands upon him. And here he is today, back our Brother Banks again, strong, running up and down those mountains. How we thank thee, dear God. You're the same God to all of us as you would be to Brother Woods. I know you love him because he's your servant, honest and sincere. And I pray, dear God, that you'll deal with each one of us and forgive our sins and heal our sicknesses of our bodies. Make us more like you day by day, Lord, until we come in that full statue of Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord. I trust that you've searched every heart now and we know what to do. We ask for you to bless us now in Jesus' name. While we have our heads bowed, is there any here present or out in the in the telephone land across the nation that would just like to, while you're praying and your head bowed, just raise up your hand to God now. That's all you can do. It's crowded in here this morning. Just raise up your hand to God and say, God, make me more like Jesus. I, I, I want to be more like Jesus. God bless you. Out into the land across the nation. Hands just everywhere, just a solid mass. Also, mind lifted up. I want to be more like Him. Search me, Lord, and find if there be any evil in me, take it out. I, I want what we just hear so long. We're, we're going to leave whether you're, where, no matter what you are, how rich, how poor, how young, how old. Standing yesterday to a, a little poor bunch of people way up in a mountain down the, on the creek. There's a little family there, a man I've been talking to about God so long. Come down, his little wife, seven or eight children, him, a little bitty spindly thing, out there trying to work a couple dollars a day, and a man let him live in a little shanty. And there his wife up there, nearly ready to have another child. And she had a big broad axe up there chopping wood to Pull it down, baby on one hip, pulling the wood with another. Come down to cut that wood to can of some blackberries. Keep them going hungry through the winter. My, how we felt sorry for her. Brother Woods and I went and got the truck, and went over there and cut her wood and brought it in. She's a grateful little woman. You stand there. I felt sorry for her. And we kept praying for them. And our little baby took epilepsy. We went and prayed for the little baby. And God healed it. And the other day, her husband had a hernia. Went in. I've been talking to him. He smoked both of them. She used tobacco and he did too. Typical of mountain people. And then I uh, kept talking to him about it. Yesterday morning when I went in about daylight, here he come walking out holding his hands together and said, Brother Billy, I'm a changed man. He said, I've smoked my last cigarette and I'm over on the Lord's side. She said, I just smoked my last one too. Oh, plant the seed. I, the Lord, have watered. I'll water it day and night, lest some shall pluck it from my hands. Oh, God, be merciful now, I pray. And give us the desire of our heart, because in our hearts we want to serve you. Now, Father, they're all in your hands everywhere. They're your children. Deal with them according to mercy, Lord. Not in judgment, but in mercy. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You love him? Amen. All your heart. Now you have the handkerchiefs. can get them. And now our services, I think they start a little early. 7 o'clock or something like that. Brother Neville will announce it just in a minute about when to start. Is there a baptism, I guess, this morning? The water is ready. The water is ready. If somebody here and has not yet been baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, well, it's certainly water is ready for the baptismal service. We appreciate all the minister brothers. I see Brother... How's your meeting? Went all right, Brother Parnell and Brother Martin and also many of them here. Brother Lee Vale. There's just ministers all over the place. We certainly appreciate you being here, fellowshipping with us around the world. Maybe you might not agree with me just exactly on this. Don't ask you to, you see. The only thing you just consider it. Why not you tell me? I consider it. If ministers would pick up the tape and they say, well, I disagree with that's all right, my brother. You may be shepherds and sheep. You, you feed them whatever you wish to. I'm trying my best to stay right with the Word. 
for these that's been put in my hands for God. Because sheep won't sheep food, of course. My sheep hear my voice. And that's what we live by every word that proceeds. Not all, not just a word now and then, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what the saints should live by. Let us stand out to our feet. While we bow our heads, Brother Neville, you got something you want to say to him? Brother Man? All right. Everybody feeling good, say amen. amen. All right. Now let us bow our heads and go to ask Brother Lee Bale if he'll come up here or he can. If you can get over there, Brother Bale, if you can. Brother Bale is our brother here, a writer of the books. He's getting the book ready now of the seven church ages and working with the seven seals. And we'll soon hope to have him out pretty soon. All right, Brother Lee Vale. God bless you.